Kicking It With Sensei. And today we're joined by Mark Staz, the founder of Wing Flow, a Wing Chun based system. And joining us all the way from Belgium today. And you're very welcome, Mark. Okay, thanks, uh, Emmett. And uh, hello to all for uh, this uh, interview. Uh, I'm uh, really glad to speak to you and to have this uh, the chat and interview with you, Emmett. Thank you, Ina. And first things first, how did you first get started in martial arts and what was your early influences? Uh, I, um, since I was a kid, I uh, loved martial arts in general. So uh, it's difficult to say at what age I was uh, introduced or uh, had this fever yeah. of uh, love for martial arts. But I remember when I watched television uh, at that time in the 80s, there was already uh, movies from Bruce Lee. There was also anime in uh, France that came to Belgium. Uh, in um, Belgium, it's called Club Dorothée. It's a French um, 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 a program that existed in France. And uh, in Belgium, we have access to a certain uh, cable TVs uh, from France. And I watched there um, Fist of the North Star. There was also Senseiya, Judo Boy. So uh, in that area of um, the 80s, it was uh, like uh, coming at the same time um, on television. And I watched that. I was really um, a huge fan of, of movies and, and television shows. And uh, then I saw all these animes. Um, of course, Bruce Lee was already uh, very well known. And uh, it started like that, so uh, I love to watch it. And uh, I um, went to the local library to see if there were martial arts books. And so because I could not join um, an academy or a school uh, in yeah. martial arts, because my parents, they told me, ah, you are too young, it's not good that you go now. So I had to find a way to, to, um, to steal my hunger to train and to, to do something with this uh, fire of martial arts and uh, thanks to the books everything that i saw on television then i started to train alone in my room uh, my room was not big eh? it was maybe uh, maybe four meters on four so really yeah. small one and i had uh, a small picture of bruce lee and then with all the imagination uh, all, uh, when you are a child you have a lot of imagination and uh, i was like okay i will kick i will punch so i started to train alone and then more with books I could start to, to learn specific techniques yeah. because I didn't have a computer. And uh, the only thing was through television and with the books, then I could train something. Yeah. And uh, little by little, I, I got uh, some uh, books that I could uh, buy. Um, and um, But there was none in my language because my mother tongue is uh, Flemish, which is the, the Dutch version of uh, the, the language in Belgium, in the northern part of Belgium. And uh, all the books were or in French or in English. And I didn't uh, speak at that time French nor English. So it was like really a dictionary uh, trying to translate what was written in the book. And uh, I started to train alone till I got uh, the permission to, to, to go to join a, a karate school. You, you must have had a lot of passion back in the early days to actually sit down and translate all that and yeah. kind of a lot of a lot of effort. So the, there must have been a real passion for it from the very start. And uh, yeah. so you didn't start in Wang Chun. What was the first martial art you trained in within a dojo? Or? It's very strange because um, already Bruce Lee was very famous and he, he did uh, Kung Fu. He didn't do Karate. He didn't do Taekwondo. But uh, it's strangely um, because there was a Karate school nearby. Yeah. I was immediately attracted to start martial arts classes. So no matter which kind. Yeah. And uh, it was not, as a, as a child, I was not like, I want to do Kung Fu, I want to do Wing Chun. This was not, at that time, was not something that I really wanted. I wanted to, to, to do martial arts. And in the 80s, uh, uh, we spoke about karate, but karate was also Kung Fu, was also Taekwondo, was all, all martial arts, arts were mixed and we spoke about karate in general. So uh, I think also this mindset of um, karate, it's punching, kicking, to me it was good. And uh, that's why I could start in the, 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 the school, which was the nearest to, to my home. 
And uh, thanks to a friend, uh, Serge, who uh, was older than me and he had a car and he wanted always to pick me up and, and, and bring to the karate lessons. And um, so this was the first real martial arts training I could uh, do uh, under, uh, under one instructor. Uh, it's Karate Shotokan. Perfect. Nice. And how did you transmit from uh, that into Wang Chun? How did the transfer happen? Yeah, um, I already knew a little bit about Wing Chun because in the local library there were books about martial arts and Wing Chun was already famous because Bruce Lee was yeah. uh, already a huge star. Uh, people knew he did Wing Chun and uh, also in UK there were already uh, Wing Chun schools, very famous. And uh, there was a, a book which spoke about Kung Fu, about uh, Wing Chun. And then I was like, oh, popularized by Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee practiced the Wing Chun. So I, I knew he did that. But Wing Chun to me was just a, a martial arts name that was far away from where I lived. So I could never practice Wing Chun. But it was all, all, always a, a kind of a, a, a style that attracted me, but I was like I want to do only Wing Chun. This was not how, how I uh, at that time. But um, I continued karate, then I uh, continued from there, I switched to Taekwondo because I really loved kicking and um, a karate instructor told me, you have to do Taekwondo, you are good with your legs and uh, you have to try that. And then I started to do Taekwondo a few years. I did uh, competitions with success. And from there, when I studied uh, my last year of physiotherapy, I had to move to the um, uh, university city. And there I met uh, the Belgian representative of Jun Fan, Bruce Lee's uh, Jun Fan. And I started a few months and then I read an article about Wing Chun. So it's really late that I knew about Wing Chun that I could read something actual. So that was written at that moment. And uh, they spoke about Germany. So uh, the Wing Chun of uh, Leung Ting, which is uh, very famous in the 80s in uh, Europe, and especially in Germany, there was an article, I read that, and then I said, wow, I knew Bruce Lee practiced it. So it's something I knew. But when I read the article about the principles, philosophy, techniques, etc., then suddenly it was like, the, the urge to train and to study this martial art became really big. And uh, at that time, I, I thought, okay, I will go to see myself what it is and how it feels because I practiced already very intensive martial arts. And uh, to me, I thought I can read, but this is not how it works. I need to feel it myself. And then I went in Aachen, which is near the border of Belgium, Germany. And there was one of the best Wing Chun teachers at that time, Sally Afchi, and I had really the big chance to be um, introduced by this big man who, who was at that time one of the top two, three in the world in Wing Chun, really a fighter, but also very technical. And um, I must say, after all these years, I got um, more than one instructor, but you know, when you start a martial art, you need inspiration and you need also a good influence to, to start and to continue. And uh, uh, I would say I was really blessed to have one person who showed me in detail the system who, got, who could also explain, but especially show the, the principles which are really difficult. When you speak about uh, Wing Chun, you speak about sensitivity, you speak about Qi Sao, you speak about Yin and Yang. And this is all, this is far away. So when someone explains you and can show it, then it's like, it stays forever, graved in, uh, forever in, in your memory. And uh, then I decided to move out of Belgium, to live in Germany, to train Wing Chun and uh, to quit all other uh, martial arts. Uh, you know, it, it was really difficult because I trained already, uh, yeah, 10, yeah, more than 10 years martial arts very intensively. And then to say, I will do another martial art from zero and to forget everything you did, this is not a, an easy job. And uh, over time, when I studied 
Winchen, I wanted to keep everything I, I, I learned, Taekwondo, Karate, the techniques, but in the end, I saw it's impossible. If you want to evolve and grow, you need to make a decision and to say, I invest 100% in what you do, else you do 50%, 50%, and you, you don't evolve as quick as you can. And that's why in the beginning, people think, yeah, but you are talented, you train a lot, but uh, you know, it's a decision and it's also something that you have to invest a lot in order yeah. to become good in something. And people, they don't realize that. So uh, to me, it's a sacrifice, but in the end, on long term, it's not a sacrifice, it's a decision. And, and I'm really happy that I made this step to move out from Belgium to Germany and to study one martial arts. Because when you start something, you don't know, will you do it long time? Is it a good system? Do you have a good instructor? You don't know all these criteria. And uh, I was really lucky to have a very good instructor to find the, the martial art that I really liked in, in, in theory, practice, etc. And uh, since then, I never stopped training in this kind of martial art. Uh, it's more than 20, yeah, almost 26 years that I, I am involved in only this martial art. It's 26 years I'm involved yeah. in martial arts altogether. So it's, it's, it's a very long time now. And, uh... Now, I know in recent years there's been a big sort of influence on Wing Chun due to the Ip Man films. Now, do you think this has been a good thing for Wing Chun and it's really pushed it to the forefront again? With the movies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when um, Bruce Lee became famous on television because people, they didn't know that he was only teaching, no, he was, uh, became famous with movies. And then suddenly the boom of karate schools uh, grew, uh, uh, more practitioners. Look with uh, the, um, the movie, um, I, I, don't re I, I don't remember the name with um, Jennifer Lopez. She played in a movie where she had to defend herself and she used Krav Maga as a martial art, as a self-defense. And suddenly, with, a lot of people, they uh, did Krav Maga. There was also a time where people did another martial art suddenly. Uh, movies, to me, it's uh, a huge influence in general for the society, no matter which martial art. If one martial art can be shown into movies and people know it's that martial art, then it Typically, uh, people will practice it. It's uh, like uh, a boom that's like this. So uh, the influence in movies, it's positive. Of course, the, the, the hick is that it's movies. And uh, training a martial art, it's not as easy as you see in movies. No, that's the other thing. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. And uh, I've even seen it doing this podcast now. A lot of people, when I asked what their early influence was, you hear the same things over again, the Karate Kid movies or the Ninja Turtle movies. And it's unbelievable how a movie can cause that spike in interest over a few years. And I'm seeing it now a lot of guys in their 30s and 40s that were influenced by Ninja Turtles in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. And there's, now they're instructors and years down the line and they've never practiced ninja. It was They've always went on to Wing Chun or Kung Fu. And so there must have been a very... A lot of confusion back in the 80s of different systems or maybe just different systems weren't available everywhere but uh, as you said earlier karate was everything so <laughs> it was a, an umbrella term really yeah. but um, you, you've developed a wing flow system over time and uh, how did you sort of come from Wing Chun into this system of your own and how did that develop? Yeah, um, uh, Wing Chun, I practiced it many years and I was always part of federation and organizations. And uh, unfortunately, when you start to follow one instructor, um, you are part of a federation. And at a certain moment, the last federation, I um, didn't come along with the founder, with the, the mindset and all the, the vision of uh, what he wanted. So um, I, I would not say it's, it's always easy to, 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 uh, to quit federations and to go your own path. And uh, what happened, it's, it's um, 
due to uh, different circumstances that I decided not to be part of any more of a federation or, or that federation. And instead to, to join another federation, I thought, okay, I will stop this. I will only train for myself and uh, to see how I can develop myself. So uh, this was the, the, main, the main purpose for me to go away but never to stop martial arts. So because I practice martial arts already many, many years and it's, it's a passion, I, I, I will never stop that. This is something that no matter, there, there is no federation that exists, no problem, I will train for myself. And this was something that after this, uh, this separation with the, the last federation and I was really sad about all the, 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 the story and what happened, but I never thought about quitting martial arts. This no, this no, because this is something that's personal to me. But because I was already famous on internet in um, uh, 2016, uh, and at that time, end of 2016, uh, early 2017, uh, it was a big boom. And then I, I, I could not stay anymore in a federation. But uh, because people wanted to follow me and they wanted absolutely to follow Mark Stas and not yeah. what I did before, not Wing Chun, not another style. Yeah. And then I said, okay, uh, what matters to me is that I can practice in all calm, no politics, no stress about human uh, behaviors. This is uh, something that I didn't want. So I just wanted to continue to train and to develop and to continue what I, what I do. You know, people, they ask me sometimes, yeah, but you were um, instructor, you were also a student of this, this uh, master. Yes, but all people are like that, you know. Yeah. When you have a grand master, he was also a student of another master. So all are a student of someone. So it's inevitable that when you learn something, an art, X years that there is always an influence. Uh, I did karate, I did taekwondo, I trained in different arts, uh, I did many years Wing Chun. It's logic, what I do is thanks to all these instructors that I am now Mark Stas today. This is okay, but when you go your own path, then you have your own vision, you have also your own preferences and you have also your own techniques that you like and, and, and uh, theories that you think differently. And this is what happened when I um, wanted to continue, but people wanted to follow me. I had to, to create a name because I cannot say, yeah, I do something. I train, okay, do what you want. This is not uh, how it works. So I had to structure programs. I had to say, okay, in the martial art that I do, what do I like? What can I do the best? So uh, that's how uh, I had to work very hard to create programs, to have a philosophy and a vision about what is uh, the martial art that I do. And you need a, a name. So uh, already to, to choose the name of wing flow system, it's something, it, it took a little bit time, you know, yeah. to have something and uh, something that fits me. So uh, when people say, oh, uh, you have uh, that uh, martial art that you name, yeah, but it's because I, I thought about it. How will I name it? And within wing flow system, there are techniques, tactics, principles, etc., that fits me, logic, because yeah. When you create something, you will not say, I will do this and I take something that I don't like. This is how it works. So you have an own um, um, vision about what you want with martial arts or self-defense or combat sports. And then you put it into your own uh, curriculum to teach and to train. And this is how it developed slowly. It took more than two years to develop the system because uh, in the beginning I had ideas, but it was too influenced with everything I learned before. And over time, I changed it a lot. So a lot of techniques that I did before, I kicked it out. Uh, I got a very um, um, good view of what techniques or what kind of system I wanted to do for myself. And uh, that's why over the years, the, the few years it exists, it modified already. And uh, till now, now it's stabilized that there is also a, a fixed a curriculum uh, with uh, programs, which is uh, uh, fixed now. And uh, this is how it, it uh, grew into Wingflow system. But uh, uh, to say that I quit 
Wing Chun to create Wing Flow system, this not because when I studied Wing Chun, I never would imagine that I would create an own system, never. You know, so uh, uh, you can always think, okay, over time I will go my own way, but I was not like that. When I was into the federations, I was 200% with all the, the, the structure, with all the techniques, the programs as an instructor in system. I would never think now I will learn this to create something else. No, yeah. because there is an obligation to quit and to, to do something else. Then I had to think really hard to create something, you know, so um, it's a hazard, but it's also, I think, a destiny in life that uh, you, you go a path and then suddenly you, you go to another path, you know, yeah. so it's, uh, but I think always there is always a solution, there is always an outcome when you are driven by something, and to me, in all my life, martial arts has always been a very important place in my life, and I could never imagine to stop. I could imagine to say, I don't teach anymore, but I will always continue to, to practice. Yeah. And, and no matter, because even if it's Wing Flow System or, or not, to me, Wing Flow System, it's only a name, but I don't, it, it's not so important to me, you know? So uh, it's, uh, uh, you can be linked to a name, uh, uh, martial art, but to me, uh, it's only because it's essential to promote it or to have instructors who teach something but uh, finally uh, you express yourself when i do my movements in martial arts you will see that i have a specific way of of uh, executing of uh, performing and maybe in 10 years you will see that i do it differently because in one year two years five years ten years you change you know, and that's why uh, what is fixed now in 10 years it can change maybe the name can change. And that's why, okay, actually I have been through a system as a, a martial arts name, which is very, very new, but uh, it's still part of, I would say, the, tr the tree of Wing Chun, the Southern Chinese martial art. Uh, Wing Flow system is a big part of it because th there is a lot of principles like uh, economy of motion, sensitivity or a chi sao, um, um, simultaneity, uh, all these principles and strategies are part of Wing Flow system, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And do you think it's important as a martial artist to kind of take that responsibility of self-development and kind of develop your own influences and kind of grow as a person over time? Do you think it's, it's important for your evolution really as a martial artist? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, I was always, since I was a kid, when I started karate, I was always part of organizations and federations and clubs and academies. But uh, when you start to, to, to grow with the mindset, with um, you think about what you do and you, you train a lot, and over the years, I, I don't speak about two years training, but when you train 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 35 years, it's, it's a long time. And uh, it's logic that uh, you can learn new techniques, you can uh, learn uh, new martial arts. But to me, what is most important is that, uh, of course, I have one path. So I continue to do what I, I like and what I do the, the best for myself. But uh, you have to be happy with the evolution. So as a martial artist, to me, number one is that you train and you continue to evolve. Evolving doesn't always mean that you learn new things. Evolving is um, it's more what you do, that you master it in a different way, maybe in a better way. But better way is not always more technical way to me now. It's that, uh, for example, in one or two techniques that I have a better feeling, that I, I feel that I am more economic. Uh, you know, it's uh, for me, I look more about the quality of movements, about economy of motion. So it's not more techniques. Of course, there are always more techniques that we can learn, but it needs to fit for me into the pattern of what I do already. If I mix martial arts, but it, it doesn't have a link to go into the flow of one movement, second, third movement, then I, I don't train that. You know, so I think as a martial artist, when you train many years, you have a lot of techniques already, many techniques. 
It's not like a boxer. A boxer, he trains a jab, a cross, a hook, a uppercut. He has two arms. Uh, you double it, left, right. It's very limited. But in martial arts, you have a lot of techniques. When you do karate, kung fu, taekwondo, you have many, 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 many techniques. So over the years, I learned a lot of techniques. But it's not more techniques that I want to do. I want what I do, that I master it better than what I did before. So uh, to train, it's not only to learn more, but it's more that uh, you have to work on quality. So it's definitely, as a martial artist, as an instructor, you, you have to train. I, I train every day, and this daily training, it's not because I have to, it's because uh, you love it, but you want to, to have an objective in life. When you train, you have an objective. You say, okay, uh, I want to go into uh, economy of motion of these techniques. When I uh, practice kicking, I look that I can have uh, a quick motion, that I can have a good balance. You know, so there are um, um, characteristics for a technique or a combination that are important. And it's like a checklist, a checklist. I will do, a, for example, a, a jab. If you do boxing, jab. Okay, is the jab, uh, is the power forward, uh, is the shoulder for or back, is the weight there? You know, you, you need, uh, I think when you train personally to evolve, you need a checklist. What is good, what is not good? You need to be uh, critical with yourself. And uh, this is how I train. When I train, for example, the wooden dummy, uh, I do movements and then I can repeat it uh, maybe 10 minutes, one movement, 10 minutes, one movement, and only one movement. It's boring when you look, but when you look, uh, Emmet, you know, you look, you say one time, 100 times, but when you do it, you enter in another state of development. And this is how I always say, when you look on social media, people, they look videos, oh, this was well, not good. But this is not the same as when you do it, when you practice it, then you have a complete different vision and, and mindset. What are you doing? It's different from people, they're looking. That's why, um, if, even if you don't have founded a martial art, if you are an instructor or if you are a, pr a practitioner, training, personal training, it's, it's a must. To me, it's really a must because uh, you learn to develop. And also, uh, the more you train, the more that you get this habit to train. When you train one time every month, it's not a habit. And it's like, oh, okay, I have to train. It's one time a month, you know? So the training, it, it triggers inside yourself also the, uh, the the urge to train. You say, okay, hey, it's a good feeling. Oh, it was a bad feeling. Ah, no, uh, I have to repeat this exercise again because it didn't feel well. And this is to me evolution. It's not more techniques, but more techniques becomes also a better feeling, a better ex execution, uh, uh, you work on quality. And the more you train, the more you will look at quality. So definitely you, you have to train, you have to invest time and energy to, to become better as a martial artist. Because uh, Emmet, all uh, martial arts, they have the word art in it. And art, it's never ending. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's not easy to, 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 to understand. Because when you say ah, it's never ending, then yeah, but why we start something if it's, uh, it doesn't have an end? This is also, but um, uh, art, the beauty of art is that if you are talented or not talented, you are old or young, it doesn't matter. Every person, every single individual person can learn and train. And this is the beauty in martial arts. So it's not dependent if you are white, yellow, black, uh, huge, uh, small, old or not, you know, so there, there is no discrimination in martial arts training. And this is something that I always say, uh, normally there cannot exist uh, an excuse to not to train, you know. Yeah. Even if you don't have equipment, you can always shadow boxing, you can always train alone. So this is what I did when I was a kid. I didn't have uh, a mirror in my room. I had only a small picture. I didn't have uh, an instructor. I had to train alone. So um, uh, important is uh, to, to invest time in training for yourself, not for the others. Uh, yeah. Indirectly, it becomes also for the others. But first of all, you have to like what you do. You have to train and you have to like it. So you have to develop this 
this motivation, self-discipline and self-motivation, th these are really important uh, when you want to train, no matter if it's martial arts or other sports, you know, this self-discipline and motivation, it's, it's uh, the, 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 the drive energy you need to become better and better. Yeah, definitely. It just puts me in mind of one of our students now. He, he didn't actually start until retirement age. So he was in his 70s before he first stepped on the mats to train. And uh, I think he's about eight, eight or nine years training now, but very disciplined. And it's, he always speaks so strongly about his martial arts and really yeah. enjoys it. He's got real passion for it. Oh, wow. So it's, it's great to see that. That's just as you mentioned, there's no yeah. buyer's age, whether young or old. There's always someone I like to mention when, when it does come up now. But um, technology has played a big part in the past years, especially due to COVID. Yeah. But uh, do you think it's it's good the technology is kind of bridging that gap at the minute? And do you do you think it should be continued into the future, where technology is used more to complement in-person training? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I think when we face difficulties in life, like the COVID, the COVID is a big, big. Um, um, a big problem in all the world, uh, not only for martial arts, but um, uh, in general with uh, social contact, etc. But the one thing that people learned about that is that they 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 will train alone. They will invest time to do something, you know, because. Uh, before the COVID, uh, a lot of practitioners, I speak now about martial artists, they were used to go to the academy, there was an instructor, they trained, and then suddenly with the COVID, everything is closed, and um, you see immediately those who just train well because there is an instructor, and the others who are uh, really more martial artists. And they look for solutions. And the solutions is when you cannot go outside, you have to stay at home, then you will say, okay, I will invest time. So uh, the, the positive thing about the difficulties like the COVID is that you will look for solutions. And internet has a lot of solutions, uh, online lessons, but also you, you see you are a dependent of yourself. You have to train because there is no one who will take your arm and say you have to punch like this or kick like this. So, uh, you know, so they, they became less dependent of others and uh, this is something to me I think good people they learn to be independent in training I was always like this so I never went to an academy to train I was always at home training uh, even now I have my equipment and I train independently but I imagine uh, students who are used to go into an academy and they suddenly say oh, I miss training and they don't take time to train at home I think that a lot of practitioners, they changed and they said, okay, now I will train because it's too long and I have to move, I have to, to execute my technique. So uh, this negative side in the world uh, gave something positive for humanity, I, humanity for uh, martial artists, they, they train. When everything becomes open, to me, it would be very good if the martial artists, they go back into academies, but also take time at home to train because it's a really uh, a add on. It's, it's something that makes you evolve more easier and quicker, you know? Yeah, definitely. And finally, how can people get in touch with you or find your stuff online and follow Mark Stas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can follow me. I am uh, more active on Instagram. So I have my Instagram account, uh, maxstas underscore uh, WFS. I'm also on Facebook, but yeah, that's uh, since last year that I've uh, again an account, but I have my website, uh, wingflowsystem.com and uh, they can also send me their uh, a message. But uh, more, uh, more uh, active on Instagram. Um, I cannot promise to answer immediately because I get I got a lot of messages and I don't see all the messages in time. But um, uh, already a, a good way to to uh, get in touch with me it's through social media, of course. And uh, when I post a video or image. There are comments, uh, I try to, to, to look at it uh, regularly. So uh, this is already one way. And uh, yeah, uh, with my website, there is also a formula that they can uh, enter and it comes immediately in my um, uh, email uh, mailbox. Uh, 
Yeah. They will find a way if they want to get in touch. If they want, if they want it, they'll find it. <laughs> That's perfect. And thank you very much for coming on today, Mark. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks a lot, Emmett, for the interview. And